Just lift your hand and say, Lord, let it be done. Hallelujah. Let it be done. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Let your will be done. Let it be done. That's our prayer. That's our prayer. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, choir, for that blessed selection. Come on, let's clap our hands and praise God for the choir. That was a blessing. Let it be done. Let it be done in my life. Praise God. Just lift your hands for those of you that don't mind worshiping just for a few seconds. You got to tell him that. My storage is empty. My storage is empty. And I, and I am a How many ever felt like you were just empty? You had gave all you could. You did all you could do. And you spent all you could spend. You prayed all you could pray. My storage is empty. And I am. And I am a bit of a to you. One more time, and we got to go. Just tell the spirit my story. And I, and I am available to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's open our Bibles in that same spirit of worship to Job. Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1. Hallelujah. 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 Mm. Job chapter 1. Yes. Job chapter 1. Verse 20. Job chapter 1 and 20. That's a sweet worship. Yeah, glory. My storage is empty. My storage is empty. My storage is empty. The song of the Lord. My storage is empty, oh. My storage is empty, yeah. Thank you. For the ten worshipers. Mm -hmm. My storage is empty, My storage is empty, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes it is, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. My storage is empty. And I am available to you. Don't 
need a title today, Lord. Don't need a position. Oh, my story is in. Don't need nobody to call my name. I am not a If don't nobody ever realize the good I've done, it's all right with me. It's all right. My storage, my storage is empty. Go, because I can just stay right here. Job chapter 1. Verse 20. Job chapter 1. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 20. When you found it, say amen. Thank you for standing for the reading of the word of God. Job chapter 1, verse 20 gives this intelligence. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshiped. Somebody say worship. And said, naked came I out of the womb of my mother and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord hath given and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Skip over to Job 1 and 14. Job 1 and 14. Job 1 and 14. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them. And the Sabaeans fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have all slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And only I am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God is falling from heaven, and have burned up the sheep and the servants, and consumed them. And I only have escaped alone to tell thee. And while he was yet speaking, there came also another, and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands, and fell upon the camels, and have carried them away. Yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only have escaped to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another, and said thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house and behold there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house and it fell upon the young men and they are all dead and i am only escaped alone to tell thee i want to talk teach and preach from the thought from the thought it gets better in the end you may be seated in the presence of the lord it gets better in the end look at your neighbor tell your neighbor it gets better just a little bit a little bit more it gets better in the end 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 my brothers and sisters as we have come to this month of advent christmas if you like me you start preparing your mind your business, your attitude, your spirit to move into what is supposed to be a new and fresh start. Every new year brings what we believe to be a new and fresh start. We believe that with that new year, new adventures and new glories and new possibilities are given to the people of God. We go into the new year as children of faith and light, not even really concerned with the dark things that will come to us. Because if you remember this time last year when we were preparing for watch night, when me and Overseer Woods were preaching that tag team message, we were celebrating what the new year would bring. And we had no idea, you had no idea, we had no idea the dark things that would befall us in 2014. 
We had no idea that in 2014 we may have to cry a little bit. We, we didn't know that we'd lose some people that we hold dear. We didn't know that some things that we thought we needed would be stripped from us. We would even not even have known that some people we thought we needed would be stripped from us. And some places that we were going would be, would be voided to us. We, we had no idea in knowing the things that would be placed on our shoulders in the new year. But we came jumping and shouting and dancing, believing that God was going to do something great for us. And for many of us, matter of fact, all of us, God did do some great things for us. Come on. Amen. That, that's some of us that have had some dark days, but, but you got to tell the truth. I, every day wasn't a dark day, and, and we can do like the songwriter said, my good days outweigh my bad days, and I simply will not complain. Every person under the sound of my voice is sitting in this sanctuary today. You're blessed. I know you don't feel like it today. You don't see it yet, but I come to tell you that you are blessed. I don't care what the devil whispered to you on your way to church. I don't care what he's trying to say to you in your ear right now. As I stand on this word to preach it, I come to tell you, you are blessed. Well, preacher, what do you mean I'm blessed? I got this going on. I got that going on. This ain't right, and that ain't right. But the fact that you're sitting here breathing and hearing me, you're blessed. The fact that you, that you are able to look around and see who's around you you're blessed the fact that you got the activity of your limbs you may be a little limited but you got the activity of your limbs you may have some health conditions in your body but you're not dead you're not in the cemetery you're not in the morgue you're in church you could be at home in bed you could be at the Rue Carter on Cold Spring Road you could be at Midtown Mental Health you could be at Koala Alcohol and, and Drug Center but wake up somebody that's sleepy from this weekend's extravaganzas and tell them I'm still blessed I don't care what you got to say about it. I don't care how many bills I left on the counter. I don't care how many doctor's appointments I got before the new year. I don't care how many negative haters that are sitting next to me today in church. I'm still blessed. It don't matter that you didn't speak to me this morning. It don't matter that you just lifted your hands and said, my storage is empty, but you ain't talked to me since this time last year. I'm still, yeah, I came to preach. I might as well. I might as well. I'm still Bless. It don't matter. Don't matter. Don't matter that you drove the church on air and faith in God. That the car wouldn't stop between here and 38th Street. It doesn't matter that you left a house with hell in it, in it, around it, in the back of it, and in front of it. If you made it to church, it's an indication that God is still blessing you. It's an indication that God is not done doing for you what he said he would do. I told you last week. That you cannot leave this earth until everything God ordained to happen in your life has come to pass. And though the vision tarry, wait on it, for it surely shall speak and not lie. We've come to this communion service Sunday. We've come to this high and holy service where we are preparing to break bread and receive the symbolisms of our redemption, the sacraments of our redemption. And many of us have been found in Job 1, 14 through 21. You, you have lived Job's experience. And something about this text really ministers to me because what you see happening is one trouble after another. One situation after another. And if you be honest, I know you've said like I said, if it ain't one thing Come on, talk to me. If when I think I just got done with one thing, here comes something else. As soon as I feel like God has delivered me from this, then right on the foothills of my testimony comes another thing. God bless me, and while I'm shouting, here comes the devil with something else. And many of us that'll be honest with ourselves first and with our neighbors last is that all of us have been in this situation that Job was in where we were settled. We had done no evil, and we were trying to serve God, but while serving him, here came a testimony of trouble can I pause here and remind you ain't it something when everybody everybody else dies but at least one person makes it out to bring you bad news isn't that interesting how everybody else went on about their business but only one person showed up with a negative report and I come to tell you that you got to have some of them kind of people in your life I know you like me you get sick and tired of them and you wish you could just eradicate the whole existence with negative 
reporting people but negative reports are necessary to remind you that God is still on the throne come here Roosevelt Sanders that he's still sitting up high and looking down low and if you don't bring a negative report I won't have a reason to dance in the morning if you don't bring a negative report I won't have a reason to apply my faith Job is in a troubling situation while he is minding his own business somebody shows up to Job's residence and says Job while you're here minding your business the Chaldeans have snuck in and stole your assets while he was talking somebody else it's knocking on the door. Job, all of your children were at their oldest brother's house. And while they were eating and drinking and having a party, the winds hit the four corners, the north, the south, east and the west, and the whole house fell in on all of your children. And all of them are dead. While they're telling Job, about his dead children. Another report comes up. Tells Job, look, while your children are dying, everything that you thought you possessed has been stolen from underneath your nose. At this point, many of us would be cussing. Okay, I know you ain't gonna say amen because cause you real saved. You got on your first Sunday garb and you don't want nobody to think you ain't said a cuss word. Uh, but everybody in here, hallelujah, ain't got that testimony because many of us and all the Holy Ghost you got could not stand listening to all of this negative stuff back to back to back. My family gone, my money gone, my asset is gone. The very thing that keep feeding me is gone. My, my children have have slipped away from me, not one of them, but all of my babies are dead. And I'm forced to respond to everything that's happened to me. The question becomes, how many of us would be able to handle this kind of news? Some of us can't handle a cold. Some of us get a splinter and we're ready to backslide. Some of us can somebody tell an alone you and you're ready to leave the church? Some of us can't handle a little bit of nothing. And so what would you do if everything you had, let me ask you this, if you left church today and went back home and everything you owned was gone, what would be your response? You just got done lifting your hands and saying, I'm available. But you go home and your house is nothing but ashes. What would be your response? If you went out on the parking lot and the sheriff wasn't doing her job and your car was gone, what would be your response? If that person you just touched and told them what the Lord said to tell them through the preacher and they turn around and say something nasty to you and tell you scoot over because I don't want you sitting next to me like two of you have done on this side. What would be your See, you find out how saved people really are when they get in a joke. Okay, y'all, I know. I know I got to work hard this morning, Crystal, but I'm going to work. You find out who really got the Holy Ghost for real when you end up in a Job 1 and 14. You find out how much word you got in you when you end up where Job ended up. Many of us would stop dancing. Many of us would stop worshiping. And let me tell you the reason why we would stop dancing and why we would stop worshiping. Because many of us only dance and worship contingent upon how good things are. 
<laughs> Let me preach to y'all because I don't know what's going on over here. But the rest of us will keep on dancing and worshiping because we realize I was dancing and worshiping before I had what I had. And if it all leave me, I'll still be, all right, come on, dancing and worshiping. I was worshiping before I got that job. So just because it leave me don't mean I stop responding. In fact, I'll keep responding because it was my response that got me what I got in the first place. Let, let, me, let me bring you up on some game real quick. Let me just bring you up to speed. You're not blessed. You're not where you are because you deserve it. You don't have what you have because you deserve it. But you have been faithful over a few things. God have mercy. And God has made you ruler over many. So there's no need in changing your response when your situation changes. But when your situation changes, you don't change your response, but you change the violence of your response. The Bible says since the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God suffereth violence and the violent take it by force. See what the devil don't understand is the more he mess with me, the harder I pray. What the devil don't understand, the more he mess with my family, the more I'm going to fast you. You don't understand when the devil can't seem to get is the harder he come at me. That's the harder I praise. I try to dance until I break an ankle because I need the devil to know that the harder you try, the harder I'll battle because the weapons of our warfare are oh, God are not carnal. But check somebody, tell them they're mighty to God to the pulling down. Stronghold. But the devil don't understand. You're doing nothing but fueling me. You're, you, you know what? It's almost like an antagonizing thing. The more the devil push, the harder I push back. I refuse to let the devil bully me. I, I experienced that already. I'm not going to let the devil chase me out of what God promised me. How many feel like me? I'm not getting ready to let the devil run me out of what God promised me. Devil, you mean to tell me you're going to try to make me feel uncomfortable in my own house? Somebody got to get up out of here and it won't be me. Y'all ain't talking. You got to tell the devil you don't pay no money to live up in here. You got to get out of here and take all the hell you brought with you when you go. I wish I could you ain't getting ready to cheat me out of my car the Lord gave me this car before I let you take it I'll do what I got to do to possess what God promised me stop letting the devil take stuff from you he didn't give you let me I'm just talking let's let's get back to the text because you're making somebody nervous in your area not going to let the devil bamboozle me. I'm so sick and tired of people that are supposed to be saved. And all you do is talk about how bad the devil is beating you up. Where is your salvation? What kind of salvation is this? That's a defeated salvation. The Holy Ghost I have teaches me that I have the power to tell the devil what he can. Oh, y'all ain't going to talk to me. That's what's wrong with us weak back watered down saints. We ain't got enough anointing to get a devil out of a fly. But many of us got spirits of God inside of us that can go into the enemy's territory and tell the devil I see you and you got to get up out of here look at the devil say I see you for who you are and you got to take your hands off many of us get more militant about what's happening in Ferguson Missouri than what's happening with the kingdom of God and while I don't know you wasn't there and I wasn't either and you marching and laying on the floor and, and, and going to jail and you ain't mad about them black boys that died right here in your own city. Get out of my face talking about hands up. No, your hands should have been up. When people were killing folk in Brightwood, where was the church? In Ferguson? You ain't even been to New York. You walk right here mad. 
at Officer Catantale or whatever his name was. An injustice anywhere is an injustice everywhere. But what bothers me about black folks is we pick and choose what we want to be mad about. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. If you're going to be mad about one thing, be mad about everything. We got black folk dying right here. People killing each other right here. And just cause a white person was involved, get over that too. We already know what to expect. The devil has always been the devil, but we ought to be mad also about what black folk are doing to each other. I'm Charles McLean and I approve the message. There's some hurt mothers right here in Indianapolis. There's some hurt grandmothers right here in Indianapolis. And we will get more million. You, know, you wasn't marching when they legalized same-sex marriage. Put your marching boots on and go march about that. Let me, let me, let me go. You know, I'm not too political. Let me get back where I'm supposed to be. You didn't, you didn't march about pot being legal ass because you smoking it. Come on out of here. See, y'all don't like holiness preaching. I thought this was a holiness church. Some of y'all sitting there looking at me side eyed like I'm scared of you. Ain't nobody worried about you because you're the one I'm talking to. You ought to get mad that the devil tried to take your health and march about that. You ought to get mad that the devil tried to take your children and start marching. No Q pressures down it. Take them wigs off and stop. Touch your neighbor, tell them march about that. March. Now back to the text. Won't be no hoop in the day. I don't feel like it. Job has a response that is somewhat militant. I know you're mad, but I'm, I'm good now because you're mad. If you mad, I've done my job. I can go home and sleep easy, babies. I didn't made you mad. If I ain't making you mad, I ain't preaching right. Touch your neighbor, tell me if you ain't mad by now. I got to go 10 more minutes. <laughs> so you better get mad just to make me be done in 10 minutes. Let me tell you something, people of God. Deacons, this thing is getting so real that people without a foundation won't last. For, for a decade, we've been able to play church and get away with it because the devil wasn't really afflicting us too bad. But right in through here, the devil is pulling out every stop. The devil is doing stuff you couldn't even imagine he would even try doing. Because God is saying, I'm getting my people ready. I'm setting them up so that I can come back here. And so in order to come back for a church without a spot or wrinkle or blemish or any such thing, I've got to expose those that have been in the sheepfold but were never sheep but were snakes dressed up in sheep's garments. Yeah. He said, I got to get the church ready because I got too many wolves in the pulpit in robes and collars. Oh my God. But all the time they were demons and false prophets and they were watering down the word. And the Bible said this is the hour that God is getting ready to show where the remnant are. Where are the real people? 
with the real Holy Ghost. Let me go with the real anointing. Something that was given to them out of a Job 1 and 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 experience. Where are the people that understand that some days I'm going to cry. Some days I'm going to be angry. Some days I'm going to be in need. But one thing about it, I'll never be in wanting. I may need some things, but I won't lose my foundation. I told you last week as the Lord ministered in the spirit in that deliverance service we had at the end of church, there is a catching up in the spirit. Which means there, there, there's, there's a season now where you're getting ready to have what it took others years to get. You're getting ready to have it in a matter of moments because you remain faithful through the storm. You remain faithful through the rain. You remain faithful through the beginning of it because you have to understand that in the end it's going to be better than it was in the beginning. Somebody clap your hands and say, thank you, Lord. That it's going to be better in the end than it was in my beginning. Job, you know the story. We've studied this enough to know it by heart that in this text, he seemingly loses everything. But it was later on that we find out that after Job's external faculties were taken, internally he was afflicted with sickness. Marital status was put in trouble when his wife got so inundated with what was going on with her husband and also her because it was her children as well that she got so caught up into what she saw. She told Job, curse your God and go ahead and die. But we know that in the end of this book of sorrow, Job had the audacity to keep on worshiping. Mm, I said I wasn't going to do it. Something happened to Job because when everything was slipping away, he lifted up his hand and said, Hallelujah. Anyhow, see you, you, you can only do that when you got relationship. You can only say hallelujah anyhow when you know that you know that you know that God is still in control of my situation. Am I picturing anybody that's in the middle of a storm right now? But you came to church and the way you worship, people don't even know you're dealing with nothing. But I want you to lift your hand and say, Lord, I thank you that my end will be better than my beginning. Clap your hand and shout, yes, Lord. Job is the prime example of what it looked like to keep on holding on. I was too high, but I had to come on back down to remind the saints of God that the next time you end up in a Job situation, you need to do what Job said in verse 21. He said, naked came I out of my mama's womb. And when I leave naked, shall I return hither? He said the good news that I know about my God is that the Lord he gave and the Lord have taken it away. But here's the part that we shout about. He said, blessed 
be the name of the Lord because Job had a revelation that if God had the power to give he had the power to take it away and if he had the power to take it away he had the power to give it back again do y'all hear me I'm leaving I'm leaving I'm leaving when I tell you that my daddy I ain't talking about Charles senior he's in heaven I'm talking about my heavenly father my daddy is rich in houses he's rich in land he holds yes sir the power of the world in the palm of his hand and if my God can give it to me one time and if my God take it away from me the next time I'm crazy enough yeah to simply believe that all the days of my appointed time I shall reap if I think not can I get a witness in the room today that knows of God that's able to give and take he's able to take and give well why is he taking it cause he won't approve to the devil that you don't love me like you say you do simply because you got a little something that was the devil's accusation against Job he said he only loved you cause you put a hedge all around him he only served you cause you blessed the work of his hand God said come here come here devil let me prove to you that New Haven ain't a church that praises contingent upon what they have but their praise is contingent off of who I am y'all just missed a shout my praise is not contingent upon what I have but my praise is contingent because of who I have if I ain't got nothing come here Beyonce if I ain't got nothing I know I got him if I ain't got nobody I got him if I ain't got no money I got Jesus touch your neighbor say neighbor say neighbor if I ain't got nothing